folks, uh, VM Explorer. I hope you're having a, a great day. Uh, in this session for building a nested lab with Workstation 17, uh, we're going to be going through part three, which is a setup of uh, the actual networking. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, kind of changed the parts around a little bit. I was going to do networking and the setup of Windows at the same time, but there are a lot of steps in setting up Windows, uh, the 2022 Active Directory. So I kind of split that out. So now there are nine uh, parts uh, in this series. Uh, so for this one today, uh, I'm going to show you a few cleanup items I've done to the system since we last uh, met up, uh, review just the IP tracker sheet and explain that a little bit, and then we're going to get into the setup of uh, Windows 17 uh, networking. Okay, uh, overall goals. Uh, so we've kind of completed the uh, over underlying OS Windows 11. We've got Workstation installed. We're good there. Uh, today's kind of session is going to address this one goal we have here, which is networking is private, but should be allowed for internet access is what we're going after today. All right. So if you remember from our uh, planning from part one, we talked about uh, this diagram. This diagram is really important and it's something you should do in your planning process to figure out your networking. You know you're gonna need ESXi management for the host and a VM network. I put those both together, that's fine on orange. Uh, you know you're gonna need a vSAN network or an ESA network, that's green, right? So that's a separate network, network 11, right? And then an FT, kind of vMotion and other things, replication, et cetera, can go on the purple network, which is uh, the 13 network right here. So with that in mind, then I would set up IP addresses for all of the devices, like uh, ESA host, this is ESXi host down below. ESA 101 is going to be 10.0.10.101. Same with 102. That's the dot .102 address. 103 makes it really easy to remember, see? Uh, VCSA is going to be 223. And the Active Directory controller is going to be uh, 222, right, on the inside network. But remember, it's going to be RAS, remoting, uh, giving NAT access to the Internet. And it's going to be an 8222 address on the outside. This is really important to get this all understood before you go into uh, setting up the, the networking uh, componentry for uh, Workstation, right? So with that, let's go ahead and transition over and we'll start working on our uh, setup. So uh, first thing we want to talk about was a little bit of cleanup items that we've uh, that I've done since we last met. So the first thing to do is you're going to want to probably go in and change your power options, right? So think about it. You're running VMs and workstation and the system shuts down. It goes into hibernation mode, whatever it is, right? Or it's, you know, it's balancing power. Sure, you could apply these things and, and let it do that. But if it shuts down the middle of a VM or a VM is running, not the best thing to do, right? So I always like to go in and choose my power plan ultimate performance. We're good there, right? And then come in here also and set the display and the uh, put the computer split to uh, never, right? So we're good there. Okay, other things I've done. So uh, we've downloaded all the files we're going to need to do the installation. This is something you're going to want to do. I put them in an install file folder, right? So I have my Microsoft installs here ready to go. And then I have my ESXi 8 uh, installs here ready to go, the ESXi right here and the VCSA server uh, being here. HCI benchmark isn't here yet, but eventually this is where it'll land uh, when we're ready to get it installed. A few other things I did, you might notice that the name of the device has changed. I was supposed to put ESA, not ESXi here. Uh, ESA 101, right? I made a virtual machines folder in here and then also made a folder for this particular uh, VM. I went ahead and did that on all these uh, particular areas here, or particular drives here. Uh, for example, here's the AD controller, which will eventually go there, and uh, uh, VCSA, which it goes here, right? Okay, so with that all done, power setting folders, and I think that's all the real uh, cleanup items that I've done since we last met. So let's get into the uh, networking pieces for um, VMware Workstation Pro. So let's open it up. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do uh, is go into the virtual network editor, right? And as you can see here, uh, there's a, you got a, a few networks already re going. So VM net one is host only, and it looks like there's an eight here natted, and there's a few addresses, uh, things of that nature. But if you notice, it's all kind of grayed out here and you can't choose below. You have to click on the change settings box first. And then once you do that, it'll kind of come back up. There it goes, it was behind the thing. And now you can see it has more information here. So VMNet0 is bridged, VMNet1 
and eight. So why are those important? So when you actually set up a, a VM and you create one, so if we do file, new virtual machine here, right? We'll just do a, an example one here pretty quick. Okay, so there's one right here. If you notice it's a network adapter, it says NAT right now. But if we change this, right, we can change how the behavior is. So what we do is go down to a custom and I can choose one of those different networks that I want to. For example, net, net one was host only and eight was natted. Uh, but maybe I want to do something else. This is where private networking comes into play and why your network map uh, is so important, right? So you're going to really want to make sure you're tracking your IP addresses and making sure you understand which networks they're going on to. And that's what we're going to set up today. So the first thing to do really is to come over here, use a spreadsheet and start filling that out. <laughs> that's probably the easiest way to start tracking this because you have lots of things you're going to need to track. So I've set up a range for DHCP, which is 10.50.100 on the 10 network. Here's my 11 network. Here's my 13 network. Here's the external network, right? So went through and said, okay, 50 through 100 is for DHCP. That's great. Uh, there's ESA 1, 2, and 3, right? 101, 2, and 3, okay? They're addresses. And then AD 222, right? Which goes here and 223. Start tracking this. But eventually as you start growing this network and nesting things, right? Bringing VMs, you're going to want to track these IPs. This is just the start of it. More is going to start to appear here, right? Let's go to the network diagram and just take a quick peek. It's always good and handy. I like putting my network diagrams in the spreadsheet and then also access. So you're probably going to have like administrator users and passwords, things you might want to track. Now this is for a home lab. So tracking it on a, a Google spreadsheet, I'm not too worried about it. It's my home network. I don't keep anything personal in there. It's just for a home network that's completely private to me. I'm not worried about putting it into a spreadsheet. If you're doing this in production, you probably want to worry about that and not put it in a spreadsheet like this. But for me, it's a one-stop shop. I got all my information. I got my spread, my IP addresses I need to know. I got my network diagram here, which I have to set up, right, and where things go, which is helpful, and I update that as I change things, and it makes it really easy for me to track everything. Okay, so enough of the tracker spreadsheet. Let's get back to doing it here. Let's get rid of this guy. We don't need him anymore. We're going to go ahead and delete him off the disk, and he's gone. All right. So let's go back into our network editor. Now, what we need to do is get networking all squared up. We don't need any of this here right now. I don't need zero and one and eight, none of it. There's no reason for it to be here for me and it only gets in my way, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Now when I do add network, I'm gonna choose the 10 network that was similar to what I did before. Okay, so it's gonna, See how it's assigning an IP address, right? Now what I do it, to get this fixed so it knows what network this is, I just type in 10.0.10.0 and click apply. So now that becomes my 10 network privately. Okay, Don't need to have DHCP set up here. No reason for it at this time, so I'm going to turn it off. Okay, add network. So now we're going to bring in the 11 network. Okay, host only if you notice. Let's update that one. Okay, let's take off DHCP. Done. And then our last network, which is the 13 network. So if you noticed here, I chose the 10 to represent 10, VMNet 11 to represent 11 and 13. See, it makes it a little bit easier to remember those things because there's no area where I could put notes in here like this is for management and et cetera to remind myself. And I'll show you why that's important as we move forward and try to interconnect these uh, 
networks to the VMs. So that's it. That's all the network we need to do. It needs to be host only. We're not bridging it, which means we would uh, say, okay, this network goes out a specific network adapter. And we're not doing NAT where you chooses the default uh, NIC to use NAT to go out and come back in. We're all doing private host only network because that's all we need to do with this environment. Let's choose OK. And now our network's set up. So when we go in and we create our VMs now, When we edit this here, we'll see that those networks are now present for us to choose from. So maybe this is network 10, right? I can add a network adapter if I need to. Okay, and I can change this to 11. And so on, you get the idea. And that's what we'll be doing as we start setting up uh, these VMs. So with that, we are ready to take the next step which is getting our Active Directory controller uh, set up with uh, uh, Windows uh, Server 2022. In there, it's going to be set up with AD, DNS, DHCP, RAS, and NTP as well. So it needs to be established first before we do any ESXi setup. We've got to have these services up and running. They're critical for the ESXi hosts and the VMs that run on it to have these services available to them. And without it, it becomes more difficult. Now, could you use something else besides Windows uh, Server for Active Directory? Absolutely. You can use a different DNS server or whatever you choose. I choose Windows because it's convenient. I have the download. I have access to Visual Studio, and it's uh, easy for me to set up and get rolling. You could probably run another DNS or uh, you know all types of different things to help you out with that. In fact, if you look at TamLab um, in YouTube, there's a bunch of videos out there on different choices for authentication servers and DNS and things of that. But folks, that would be another video that we're talking about now. I want to thank you today for uh, listening in for uh, part uh, the last part here. And uh, we'll be moving on with part four uh, real shortly. Have a great day, everyone. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you.